This speech is about festivities in 2012, specifically about the Diamond Jubilee and the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge. This year, 2012, is certainly a year for major events and celebrations. The Olympic Games are due to take place in London this summer, and of course, we have also just celebrated Queen Elizabeth's Diamond Jubilee. These were the celebrations marking 60 years of her reign, a task she has undertaken with great dignity and poise. Millions of people around the world enjoyed this very British of celebrations. The vast armada that sa sailed down the Thames, the fireworks, the smaller local pageants, the concerts. It was a three-day celebration in fine British tradition, complete with incessant downpour, even though I'm not quite so sure that the Queen enjoyed some of the more recent pop stars very much at the concerts, such as Will I Am or Lady Gaga. But it was all very good on feel-good factor, a truly uplifting event. Another important birthday was also celebrated across the Atlantic this year. The Golden Gate Bridge was 75 years old in May. It was originally built to boost the local economy. The only way to cross the San Francisco Bay was by ferry, and this was very slow. Building the bridge was thought to be impossible at the time. The water in the bay was very deep, and it had very strong currents. But above all, the bridge had to be over two and a half kilometers long. Clearly, as the bridge exists today, and is indeed the most photographed bridge in the world, it did prove to be possible. When it was built, it was the longest suspension bridge in the world. Suspension bridges are very common these days. We've all seen them. They are the bridges built around tall pillars. Cables are attached to the top of the pillars. The road sections are then hung from these pillars by the cables. They're suspended. This is a very clever and useful way of building bridges because it allows them to have a certain amount of flexibility. They can sway a little in high winds, which means that they don't snap and break. In hot weather, the joins in the road sections mean that the bridge can expand, just as it can contract in cold weather. You have to realize that a very long bridge can actually vary in length by tens of centimeters in this way. Unfortunately, the bridge is also known for being the world's number one suicide hotspot. It is where the largest number of people in the world commit suicide. There is even an official suicide count where the jumpers, the people who jump from the bridge, are classified according to which lamppost they were nearest when they jumped. It has been estimated that there have been over a thousand suicides off the bridge, probably more than two a month. But of course, this is only an estimate. There's not always a witness to see the person jump, and bodies are not always recovered. Sometimes the only clue to a possible suicide is a pile of clothes or a hire car found abandoned at a nearby car park. Because of this fatal attraction, it was finally decided that a steel net would be hung under the bridge to catch any future jumpers. Unfortunately, as money is tight, two years after this momentous decision, the city still hasn't managed to build this net. So, Despite this rather sad story, it's nice to know that private sponsors could certainly, persuaded, could certainly be persuaded to pay for the birthday party to mark the 75-year celebration, but not to spend their money on something that could actually save lives.